okay now the next connective that we are going to take a look at is disjunction okay disjunction also known as or okay a disjunction is represented by this sign okay so let's see what is a disjunction it is similar to what we had in the conjunction so if i have p and q as they were before okay i can write p p disjunction q okay as i can write it as instead of and over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to replace this with or okay so my same statement i'm going to take off this okay and i'm going to replace this with what with or and i would get my disjunction so my disjunction says roy is playing in the field or jim is studying in his room okay so here my or is used in an inclusive sense so it basically means that either roy is playing in the field or jim is studying in his room or both roy is playing in the field and jim is studying in his room okay so that was about your disjunction statements or disjunction connective okay this disjunctive compound statement is true when at least one of the primitive statement is true okay so i'm just going to write down over here disjunctive compound statement is true when at least one of the primitive statement is true okay primitive statement is true while while for your conjunctive the conjunctive compound statement is true only when all the primitive statements are true okay so i am just going to write down over here that conjunctive statement is true when all primitive statements are okay so you understand what is the difference over here okay all primitive statements must be true now let's talk about the next connective which is a implication okay implication the symbol is this okay it is a arrow okay so let me just put a underscore over this so here i have defined p and q like this okay let me just copy this and we are going to alter it a bit okay now my q is or rather let's suppose my p is still jim is studying in his room okay and my q is jim will pass the exam tomorrow okay jim will pass the exam tomorrow so if i have to make a implication now what i can do is i can say that my implication is something like this how do you read this you say if p then q okay what you mean by this is if 
Jim is studying in his room. Okay, or let's just do it like this. If Jim is studying in his room, okay, let me just bring it over here. Then Jim will pass the exam tomorrow. Okay, so your implication means this. If then. Okay, but the thing is, your P is not the only condition that is going to ensure Q. Okay, so what can happen is, Jim can pretty well play in the field today, and he can pass the exam if he decides to cheat in the exam. Okay, so I say that P is the not. the only condition that is going to decide q okay so jim's studying is not the only condition that is going to decide whether he will pass the exam it is also going to be decided on the fact that whether jim is cheating in the exam or not okay so that was your implication connective okay your implication in english can be read in different forms one is if p then q okay the other possible forms are let me just first write the if p then q okay other forms are p is sufficient for q okay which means that jim is studying in his room is sufficient for jim to pass in the exam tomorrow okay p is sufficient for q okay then another is q is necessary for p q is necessary for p so what does this mean this means that jim will pass the exam tomorrow is necessary for jim to study in his room today or in other words for jim to pass the exam tomorrow it is necessary that jim studies in his room okay so that is another way to represent this then other way is p only if q okay p only if q and some more ways of representation in english of an implication are p is sufficient condition for q okay p is sufficient condition for q or q is necessary condition for p q is necessary condition for p okay so these are your implications in normal english now let's understand something in an implication p implying q okay your p is known as a hypothesis okay p is the hypothesis and your q is known as the conclusion okay so these are just terminologies that you should know okay now we are done with the implication connective we are going to look at now the biconditional connective okay so let me just write down over here biconditional connective the symbol for this is bidirectional arrow okay it is like this okay your biconditional connective is let's let's have some prepositions 
I'm going to have P which says it's going to rain tomorrow. Okay. This is my P. Okay. And let us suppose Q. Look, this is a preposition because it can be true or it can be false. So if it rains tomorrow, my P is true. And if it does not rain tomorrow, my P is false. Okay. And my Q, let's suppose is Roy is going to take a leave from office. Okay. So these are my two primitive statements. If I have to combine together using a biconditional, then what I can do is I can write them like this. I can say P if and only if Q. Okay. So your biconditional is if and only if. Okay, also written as IFF. Okay, so it means if and only if it's going to rain tomorrow, okay, then Roy is going to take a leave from office. Okay, so that is what is my by conditional here I have already decided that P is the only condition that is going to ensure Q okay or in other words rain is the only condition that is going to ensure that Roy takes a leave from office it might happen that tomorrow Roy is sick but that is not a necessary condition for Roy to take a leave we have said that P or rain tomorrow is the only necessary and sufficient condition for Roy to take a leave from office therefore we call this if and only if or biconditional connective so in a biconditional if i know that q is true okay if i know that roy has taken a leave then it is understood that it had rained okay but in a conditional statement like this, if I know Q is true, okay, if I know Jim has passed the exam, then it is not true that, it is not always true that Jim had studied, okay, Jim could have cheated as well, okay, so that is the difference between your implication and biconditional. Here, your Truth of Q ensures that your P is also true.